Hi everyone and welcome to this month's i2 Costex webinar. My name is James Williamson and I'm a consultant at RIB. This month we will be covering fundamental workflows for those getting started with i2 Costex by looking at how you can add and edit dimension groups. This video will cover creating dimension groups, the measurement types, default displays and how dimension groups can be edited and imported into Costex. For those who don't know, i2 Costex is a fully integrated estimating solution with universal application, supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs, 2D and 3D CAD drawings and BIM files. i2 Costex is available in a variety of feature levels depending on the size of your business or your estimating requirements. i2 Costex offers quick and easy on-screen takeoff and measurement that can be live linked to our comprehensive workbooks to help you save time and eliminate errors. The platform also offers a professional report writer, an auto-revisioning tool to help with new drawing revisions and much more. And as you can see, there are a huge variety of file types supported by i2 Costex to help with the compatibility. Our latest webinar was all about setting up projects and buildings. The session covered some useful tips for new users, such as all the different options available for initiating new projects and buildings, as well as exploring project and building properties, and even the based on shortcut, where you can use previous files as the template. You can watch this webinar at www.i2costex.com forward slash webinars. This month, we'll be going through the basics that you need to know for adding and editing dimension groups. We will look at what a dimension group is and how to create one, examining the measurement type and default display fields of a dimension group, how the default multiplier, width, height and offset can be utilised, custom quantities, measured dimensions tab, adding standard dimension groups, creating dimension groups in an Excel file to import, and finally importing dimension groups into Costex. So now we'll switch over to i2 Costex and get started. Dimension groups are a grouping of dimensions of the same measurement type and generally the same object being measured. Dimension groups may be of type area, length, count or volume. For example, a dimension group with a measurement type of count may be created to count the interior doors. It is worth noting that when dimension groups are added into Costex, they are ordered either numerically or alphabetically. For example, if we were to create two dimension groups, one for piling and the other foundations, the foundations would appear at the top of the list of dimension groups. However, if we were to number these dimension groups as 01 piling and 02 foundations, piling would appear at the top of the list. I personally prefer to number my dimension groups and have them in an order that would closely follow the construction process or accord with a recognised industry standard such as the AIQS, NRM, CSI, Master Format, etc. For this webinar, the ordering of my dimension groups is closely following the NZIQS elemental coding structure. So, how do we create a dimension group? Step 1, we need to select our dimensions ribbon tab. Click on the Add button to add a dimension group. Here we have our dimension group properties window and from here we can create our dimension group. First we give our dimension group a name. In this example I'm going to give it a name of interior doors. Next we will place it into a folder called 11 internal doors. We can also create a subfolder for the interior doors by using a backslash. For this subfolder, I'm going to call it 11.01 timber doors. Moving down the window, we will select a measurement type of count. You will notice that the default display will automatically adjust to count as well. It is worth noting that the default display can be changed by selecting the drop-down arrow in the default display field, but more on that later. 
towards the bottom of the window, we have our positive dimensions field. From here, we can select our preferred color when counting the doors. For this dimension group, let's choose the color avocado. When you're done, click on the insert button. We can now see the dimension group titled interior doors, which has been placed into the folder of internal doors and the subfolder of timber doors under the dimension group tab on the left hand side. Ensuring you have the interior doors dimension group selected, you can now commence the counting of the doors from the drawing. You will notice that as I register a count for each door, my quantity against the dimension group increases each time. As we have just demonstrated, dimension groups can be put into folders allowing dimension groups of a similar kind to be easily managed. For this example, the folder was named Internal Doors, which has in it the dimension group of Interior Doors. If we are to create another dimension group for, say, single fire rated doors, then we can select the folder of Internal Doors. To add a second dimension group, this time I'm going to right click on the interior doors dimension group and from the sub menu select add dimension group. Our dimension group property win window appears once more. Here I can name the dimension group single fire rated door. In the folder field I can select 11 internal doors backslash 11.01 timber doors. From here, I can change the text by highlighting the subfolder name and change it to 11.02 fire rated door. I'll set the measurement type to count and change the positive dimension field to spearmint and then click insert. You'll see that the single fire rated door is located in the fire rated doors subfolder and under the folder of internal doors. Before moving on, it is worth noting that if I select the folder name, I can see all the dimensions I have captured thus far. As I want to count my fire rated doors, I could select the newly created dimension group, but another way it is to use the current drop-down menu. This field allows me to see all my dimensions under the internal doors folder that capture the fire rated doors which I will demonstrate for you now. You will notice as I count doors 112 and finally 125, the quantity increases against the single fire rated doors dimension group. Let's turn our attention to the exterior masonry wall dimension group now to talk a little more about the measurement types and default displays. This is located under the folder called 07 exterior walls. By right clicking on the dimension group, we are able to edit the dimension group properties by selecting the option from the menu. By selecting the drop down menu from the measurement type field, we can see there are four options to choose from area, count, length, and volume. Under the default display, we have the option to display our measure as a different value. In this example, the dimension group has been set up with a measurement type of length to measure the walls from a planned drawing and then the wall area has been chosen as the default display. By having a default height entered at 4 meters, when the wall lengths are captured they are then multiplied by the default height to calculate the wall area. The wall area will then be displayed against the exterior masonry wall. To demonstrate how this works, 
I'm going to close out of this window by clicking the Update button. Returning to my Dimensions ribbon tab, I can change to Point Mode to measure my exterior masonry wall. Ensuring I have my exterior masonry wall dimension group selected, I can commence my measure. I'm going to register a left click just above the door, 122. I'll move my cursor to the corner of the building and left click again to complete the length. Hovering my mouse cursor over the wall, a grey hint box appears which has captured the length and calculated the wall area by multiplying the length by the default height. Moving away from the exterior masonry wall, we shall now take a look at the default fields for a dimension group. Double clicking any dimension group opens its properties. I'm going to choose the strip foundation which I have placed in the substructure folder. Starting with the default multiplier, this is where a factor can be entered to multiply dimensions in the dimension group, for example number of floors or levels. I know the width and depth of the strip foundation is 300 and 600 millimeters respectively. Therefore, I can enter these values into the corresponding default width and default height fields. I'm then going to click the update button to close the window. If prompted to apply the new width and height to all dimensions that use the defaults, click on the Yes button both times. Now I have updated my defaults, I can measure the strip foundation to the edge of the deck area and the external wall to the right of the entrance canopy. Before that, I'm going to select Line Mode from my Dimensions ribbon tab to do the measure. Focusing on the edge of the deck, as my sticky cursor attaches itself to the line, I get a preview of the length at just shy of 32 meters. By left clicking, I can capture the length. You will see a grey box appear which shows the drawing hints for each individual dimension. This includes the length, default width, default height and volume of the strip foundation. As the default width and height fields have been populated, I2 Costex is able to calculate the volume automatically by multiplying the length, width and height together. We can then use this value for any concrete that might be required, for example. By moving my mouse over to the dimension group, I can display a yellow box, which is our dimension group hint. This yellow box is the total for all dimensions grouped together. There is another way of opening the dimension group properties window which I'm going to show you now. First I need to select my fixed windows dimension group which I have placed into my windows and exterior doors folder. After selecting the fixed windows dimension group I then click on the Properties button located in my Dimensions ribbon tab to open the properties. Examining the fixed window dimension group, we can see that a default offset has been used to set a sill height for the windows at 900mm above the finished floor level. Having added a value to the offset field, when the dimensions are viewed in 3D using the View in 3D button, measured dimensions are, are displayed at the correct relative height position. To close the window, I'm going to click the Cancel button. Next, I'm going to select the View in 3D button, which is located in the Drawings ribbon tab. Looking at the display window, we can see the windows are set at 900mm above the finished floor level. Furthermore, by holding down the control key and left clicking on any dimension group, I can display that one as well. For example, 
I'm going to select the exterior masonry wall dimension group. Here we can see the exterior wall and the windows that have just been counted. To return to a plan view of the drawing, we simply click on the View in 3D button once more. Now that we have covered adding and editing dimension groups, let's turn our attention to custom quantities. By using custom quantities, you can create custom fills to calculate additional data. To create custom quantities, first, double click on a dimension group. I'm going to select the interior doors to open the properties window. You need to hit the insert button to add a custom quantity. A row will appear with the custom number column populated with the number one. You can name your custom quantity by, click, by clicking into the name cell on row one. And for this example, I'm going to type in architrave. This is also known as molding. To set the unit of measurement, click into the UOM cell and type in the letter M for meters. For our second custom quantity, Press the insert button once more. Enter in a name of kick plate. In the unit of measurement column, select the number option from the drop down menu. And finally, our last custom quantity, press the insert button again. Enter in a name of paint. In the unit of measurement column, start by typing in the letter M and from the drop down menu select meters squared. Once the name of a custom quantity is defined under the custom quantities tab, a new field with the defined name will be added to the BIM dimensions and measured dimensions tab. Switching to our measured dimensions tab, we can see that new fields have been added towards the bottom of the window. Before continuing with the custom quantities, the following fields are going to be amended. Firstly, I'm going to untick the use default boxes against the width and the height fields. Next, enter in a value of 0 0.915 in the width field. This is to denote that the internal doors are 915 millimeters wide. For the height field, enter in a value of 2.15. We have now stated that the internal doors are 2150 millimeters in height. Moving my cursor to the first custom quantity field titled architrave, I can enter an expression to specify how the value of the custom quantity is to be calculated. This can be typed into the field, or alternatively, by clicking on the ellipsis button, you open the dimension group expression editor. In this window, you will see two halves. The top half is the expression editor field. The lower half features a collection of tabs. For the purpose of this webinar, we'll be focusing on the dimension field tabs. I'm going to start this expression with an open bracket. Next, double click on the height field in the dimensions field tab to allow for the height of the door architrave. You will notice that the field appears in the top half of the window. Next, add a plus symbol to the expression editor. Return to the dimensions field tab and double click the width field for the top of the architrave. Add a second plus symbol to the expression and then double click on the height field once more. This is to account for the architrave on the other side. And finally, add a closed bracket. To round off the expression, multiplying the brackets by two allows for the architrave to both sides of the door. Clicking on the close button exits out of the dimension group expression editor. You will see that the formula 
entered is now visible in the architrave field and, you'll, and will be applied to all internal doors counted. For the kick plates field, click on the ellipsis button to open the dimension group expression editor once more. To commence the expression, start by double clicking the count field. Complete the expression by multiplying the count by 2 to register a kick plate on both sides of an internal door. We are able to jump to the final custom quantity of paint by selecting the fill drop down button located at the top of the dimension group expression editor window. To start this expression, I'm going to insert a 2 and a star to multiply the upcoming expression twice times. Next, add an open bracket. Double click on the width field in the dimension field tab to allow for the width of the door. Insert a star symbol to the expression and then double click on the height field to account for the door height. To complete the expression, use a closed bracket. The expression allows for the area of both faces of the door to be painted. Clicking on the close button once more will return to the measured dimensions tab where the expressions have been populated in their assigned fields. Click on the update button to close out of the dimension group properties window. Hovering your mouse cursor over the interior doors dimension groups will display a yellow hint box. Within the yellow hint box, we can see the calculated values for our custom quantities. To QA this, if we take the kick plates for example, we stated that each face of the door would receive a kick plate, and as we have counted four doors, two times four equals eight, therefore our expression is calculating correctly. If we were to add a couple of extra doors to our dimension groups, let's say doors 105B and 104A. And now move our cursor over the interior doors dimension group once more. We can see the number of kick plates has increased relative to the number of doors we have counted. This is the same for the architrave and paint values. Having completed our look at custom quantities and the measured dimensions tab, let's take a look at standard dimension groups. If the dimension groups you create will be used repeatedly on all projects moving forward, you have the ability to add them to the standard dimension group list. To do this, right click over the interior doors dimension group from the menu and select add to standard dimension group. A standard dimension group properties window will appear. You can make any changes in this window if you wish, which will be carried over to the standard dimension group properties. Towards the bottom of the window, you will see the include by default field and a checkbox. If the checkbox is ticked, this will mean that the dimension group will be available as standard on any new building when it is created provided that the building has not been based on an existing building. Furthermore, notes can be added if desired into the text box. Once complete, click on the insert button to close the window. To access the list of standard dimension groups, you can do either of the following. First, select the file button, and then system administration. From the left hand pane, choose measurement, then select the standard dimension groups. To exit out of the window, click on the close button over to the right hand side. The alternative option is to select the home ribbon tab. In the administration group section, select the system administration button. From the drop down menu, select the standard dimension groups option. Whilst in this window, we can insert a new standard dimension group by clicking on the insert button out to the top right hand side. 
In this window, we can populate our new standard dementia group, but for now, we're just going to click cancel to close the window. Returning to the system administration window, it is possible to import standard dimension groups from a formatted text file. The standard formatted text file for import and export is a comma separated value or CSV file in which the records are placed one per line and the attributes are separated by commas. Microsoft Excel spreadsheets can be exported as CSV files, so this is the method by which standard dimension groups held in Excel can be imported into I2 Costex. Within Excel, the standard dimension groups list that you wish to import into I2 Costex must be in a specific format. An example of the Excel template is available with your I2 Costex license, which I will open for you now. If I click on the Start button and then scroll down to RIB, Clicking on the shortcut to samples folder will open the file explorer window. Inside the dimension groups folder we will find the template called import standard dimension groups from CSV template. Here we can see the template. It looks a bit daunting, but if you follow the instructions provided in the yellow box, you will be able to import your standard dimension groups list from a CSV file with ease. Having completed your list, delete the first row to remove the column headings. Then save your Excel as a CSV file. To do that, click the File button. From the drop down menu, select Save As. For the folder type, select CSV, comma, delimited. Browse for a location to save the CSV file. When you're ready, click the Save button. If you are wondering what the CSV version looks like, I'll open this for you now. Here we can see the format that will be imported into Costex. If I scroll across to column AK, we can see the column has been populated with the value of false. By changing this value to true, this tells Costex that the standard dimension groups listed are to be included by default. I'm now going to close my list of standard dimension groups as I cannot import them into Costex whilst they are open in Microsoft Excel. Returning to the Costex system administration window, click the drop down button for the import button and select import standard dimension groups from CSV. When the window appears, navigate to where you have saved the CSV file and select it. Click on the open button commence the import. Here we have our list of standard dimension groups which can now be used for current or future takeoffs. Clicking the close button exits out of the system administration window. So now when we come to add a new dimension group we can check to see if any standard dimension groups exist. Switch to the dimensions ribbon tab and click on the Add button once more. Clicking on the drop-down arrow against the name field 
with those they are all there and ready to select from. If I was to select the surface excavation, not exceeding 300mm deep, for example, the measurement type and default display will adjust accordingly. I can also adjust the name of the dimension group and default height to allow for a different depth of excavation if desired. As I don't want to make any changes, my new dimension group will appear out on the left hand side once I click insert. If you already have a list of attributes that you wish to take off and they are in an Excel format, i2costex can import dimension groups from a CSV file which could save you time having to manually enter them one by one. Before commencing the import process, we need to take a closer look at the Excel file titled Import Dimension Groups from CSV Template to gain a better understanding of what steps need to be followed and which columns are mandatory. I will open this file for you now. To do that, click on the Start button and again scroll down to the RIB folder. In the shortcut to Samples, you will find the folder Dimension Groups again and inside Import Dimension Groups from CSV Template, which I'll open for you now. You can use this template as a basis to create your own list of dimension groups. The detailed instructions on how to add dimension groups in Excel and export the spreadsheet to CSV are provided in the yellow instruction boxes. And acceptable values for different fields are listed in the colored boxes. I will now proceed in creating my own list of dimension groups utilizing the template and I will talk you through the columns and the necessary steps. To do this, I'm going to open a version of this template which I've started to populate and will complete the new dimension groups with you. First things first, I'm going to close the sample template and then open my version. Here we can see that I have added several dimension groups and I will conclude this by adding one for the steel stud partition and another for the plasterboard ceiling. It is worth noting that there are three mandatory columns that must be completed. The first column being the folder field. If you would like to create subfolders, you can do so by naming the folder first, using a backslash to create the subfolder and then type in the name of the subfolder. For my steel stud partitions, I'm going to put them into a folder called 10 interior walls. Use a backslash to create a subfolder and then name it 10.1 steel framed partitions. For the plasterboard ceiling, I will name the folder 14 ceiling finish it. Column B, which is also mandatory, is where you add the name of the dimension group. So here I will name it Steel Stud Partitions. And on the line below, plasterboard ceiling. Measurement type is the final mandatory column. For these dimension groups, I'm going to measure my partitions as a length. And my ceilings as an area. The remaining columns are optional, but each column is assigned to an individual field for the dimension group properties. For the still stud partition, I'm going to display my wall area.
and for my ceilings, my default display will be set to area. To get the wall area of my partition, I will need to enter a default height. For the partitions, I'm going to set my height at 3 meters. Looking at the other columns, we can see the default multiplier, default width, and offset, which we looked at earlier in this webinar. We can also add the dimension group to our GFA using a true or false statement. Moving along the columns, we have the power to choose our positive and negative colors, as well as the hatchings or symbols. It is important to note that the options inputted are case sensitive and must be identical to those in the corresponding coloured boxes. As you can see, I have yet to specify a positive colour for some of the dimension groups. To do this, I can simply copy several positive colours by highlighting them in the coloured box. Right click to copy and then paste option match destination formatting to place an individual color per line. To get really geeky for a moment, I can also make use of the hexadecimal numbers for specific custom colors. For this example, I'm going to use the red, green, blue color codes. For my ceilings, I'm going to enter in the red, green, blue code of 128,0,255, which will give me a bright purple colour. You can repeat a similar process for the negative colour by copying the options from the corresponding coloured box, which I'll do for you now. So right click, copy. Paste, match destination formatting. Moving on to the positive hatch and symbol in column M for my plasterboard ceiling, I'm going to select the slant right option from the hatching box by copying and pasting it. And for column N, I'm going to leave it blank. Scrolling across the columns, we can add expressions into our measured dimensions tab or the BIM dimensions tab if you are utilizing 3D models for your takeoff. You'll notice that columns AK and AJ have a heading of unused. These two columns are related to the standard dimension group fields, which we covered earlier. You may notice that I've chosen not to include these dimension groups as standard because I've used a false statement. The final collection of columns is used for custom quantities. Once you have set up your dimension groups in Excel format, you will need to delete the first row by selecting it. Next, choose the Delete Sheet Rows option from the Cells section located in your Home Ribbon tab. Next step is to click File, Save As, and choose the CSV, comma, Delimited option. Browse for a location where to save the CSV file. And then finally click on the Save button. Your CSV will now be saved and ready to be imported. I can now close my Excel version of my dimension groups and open my Excel file, CSV file to show you what this looks like.
here we can see my template with the folder structure, the dimension group names, the measurement type, default display, default height, our positive dimension colors and our negative dimension colors, and any symbols related to either positive or negative and for the example of the ceiling finishes the slant right matching. Be sure to close the CSV file as you will not be able to import it into Costex while it is open. Returning to Costex, click on the lower half of the Add button and select Import Dimension Groups from CSV. When the window appears, navigate to the location where you have saved your CSV file and then click the Open button. You will notice that my imported dimensions will appear on the left hand side and each dimension group will be in its defined folder and or subfolder. Focusing on the ceiling finishes folder and the plasterboard ceiling dimension group, if I double click on that, you can see here there's the name, the folder structure, the measurement type and default display, and there's that bright purple colour that I specified earlier, and the slant right hatching option as well. Close out of this, just going to click the update button. Before I sign off, I'll conclude the topic of adding and editing dimension groups by giving a brief overview of what we've ran through in today's webinar. Firstly, we looked at what a dimension group is and how they appear in the dimension list. We then moved on to creating a couple of dimension groups and placed them into folders and in some instances subfolders. We then examine the options for the measurement types, default displays, and the use of the default multiplier, width, height, and offset fields. The next step was creating custom quantities and their relevant expressions under the measured dimensions tab for the internal doors. We moved on to adding standard dimension groups and how they can be imported via a CSV file. And finally, we talked about the template to create a list of dimension groups in an Excel file and importing this into i2 Costex after saving it as a CSV file. That about wraps up everything. So thank you everyone for attending this month's Coffee Break webinar. If you'd like to watch any of our other webinars, they are available at www.i2costex.com forward slash webinars. And if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at support.int at rib-software.com.